Good evening, my name is Gary Bertolini. I'm professor of computer graphics technology and computer and information technology in the College of Technology at Purdue University. I'm also assistant dean for graduate studies. Uh, tonight I'm going to make a presentation that I call the Holy Grail. Um, it really um, is an interesting presentation and it's something that I always share with uh, students at Purdue uh, because I think it brings a lot of value into uh, their education and also their career and their life in general. So why don't we get started. Um, TJ's an assistant here tonight, so he's going to bring up the first slide. For those people viewing this on YouTube, you can actually download these slides so you don't have to strain your eye to see what the slides actually look like uh, behind me. Um, so the, the, the whole point of this presentation, if you go to the next slide, um, is to really talk about what I found in years of study. Uh, this has been kind of a hobby of mine as far as what are the prerequisites for being successful and really happiness. Uh, I think success leads to happiness. Happiness also leads to success. And I also have many life experiences. Um, as I age, you know, you get other experiences. You learn about stuff. You learn from your mistakes. So I'll try and bring in real world examples of this. Um, and ultimately, though, you must reframe yourself, reframe the way you view work and education so that you view them as a privilege privilege rather than actually a duty. And I'll talk about some of these things. Uh, this isn't about necessarily my life experiences. I'm not perfect by any means. I try and, and do some of the things that are mentioned here. But this has been um, a result of years and years of rigorous study. Okay, the, the books that I have referenced in the last few slides are ones that I highly recommend you look at at some point in your life. Um, this isn't a result of me having uh, a period of insomnia where I spent long nights uh, watching uh, TV and uh, snake oil salesmen and you know doing some things in late night TV and you know you can solve all the world's problems and become wealthy by buying real estate or whatever it is they're selling at the time. Th this is about rigorous study and what people found to actually work. And the last few slides are really going to give you a, a concise um, example of what you need to do. But I'm going to build up and kind of show you how you get there. And so that's what this, this whole thing is about. So if you look at um, finding your calling, uh, that's part of what this is about. This is interesting. There's some statistics here that you need to look at. Only 50% of employees say that they are satisfied with their work. That's pitiful. Okay, I love my job. Okay, all right. In fact, if you look at uh, rankings of job satisfaction, being a professor, by the way, is usually one or two. So I guess maybe I'm lucky because I picked that as a profession. But you might even want to look at where people rate as far as professions. And you can find this by just Googling that. Um, people experience work in one of three ways, and this is really important. You need to start thinking about where you want to be. It's as a job that is it's perceived as an unpleasant task, as a career where you're motivated by extrinsic factors like how much money I can make, the position that I'm going to get over the uh, period of time, and then as a calling. And that's where you're motivated by intrinsic factors. You display passion. You derive personal fulfillment and perceive your job as a privilege. It's a huge difference to go from as a job or as a career to becoming a calling. And that's really the challenge to you. Now, by the way, this doesn't have to just apply to your job. OK, maybe you want to just have a job. And that's fine, OK? It's your life, right? But there might be other areas that you want to have a calling in. And some people do that. They don't care if they're satisfied with their work. They want to have their calling, if you will, in some other aspect of their life. I think that this can also help you with that. It can help you to find your calling, whether it's work or not. I'm going to focus in a little bit more on work because I think many of you, you're, you know, you're here in grad school because you know, it's probably career related, not because uh, you want to be more liberally educated, especially given that you're into college of technology. Okay, So let's go to the next slide. 
so successful people, this is pretty cool. Because one of the things I want to talk a lot about is time management. It's not really time management. I'll tell you what it's really called a little bit later. But Stanley Marcus, uh, some of you might know uh, Neiman Marcus. That's a common uh, a name in retail. He was once asked, what do wealthy, powerful, and famous people you know have in common? He replied, we all have 24 hours in a day. The world is expanding in almost all directions. We still only have 24 hours in a day, OK? Most successful people and the most unsuccessful people all receive the same ration of hours each day, right? Uh, you know, Warren Buffett, second, third most wealthy person in the world, same 24 hours as me. And I'm not even close to being there, right? The difference between being successful and not being successful depends on how you use your daily ration of 24 hours. Think of it in that term. You've got to drill this in your head that everyone has an equal ration of time. It's 24 hours. It's what you do with those 24 hours that really matters. So think of it in this way, the old-fashioned clock. I know most of you don't have anything but digital right now, but you know, all that tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. You got to keep that in the back of your mind. Time is important. The way you think about time and the way you think about yourself, and I'm going to talk about the self part here, will affect everything that happens to you for the rest of your life. The two most important factors in your life, being successful and happy, is what you think about yourself and how you think about time. Time is money. You want to calculate quickly how much time is? For example, I, I make a conscious decision on whether I mow my lawn or I hire someone. Okay? If I can hire the neighbor person to mow my lawn for $25 for an hour, I can do a quick calculation whether I can do it less expensively or not. And the way you do it is just take your salary, divide it by two, and then move the decimal place over three places. So let's say, to keep things simple, you're all going to graduate and make $100,000, right? Divide that by two, it's $50,000. Move the decimal place, you're worth $50 an hour. So you have to make a conscious decision whether you want to mow your own lawn or can you use that hour more effectively because the difference is $25, right? That's one quick way of calculating your worth of time. Now you might decide that I like mowing my lawn. I get out there, I put my headphones on, I relax then it's probably worth a lot more to you. So sometimes it doesn't really matter what the monetary amount is. That's where you have to know yourself, right? And decide what's important or what's not. But that's a quick way of doing things. And so, if, you know, when someone asks you to do something, when you have to decide what it is that's more important to you, you can do that quick calculation. As, and so you've just taught you how to do that. However, and this is extremely important, happiness is the ultimate currency and the only currency that really matters. More on this point later. But I can tell you right now, the study after study after study shows that getting money does not translate into happiness. In fact, there's people that have studied um, winners of lotteries. And what they found is that most people that win the lottery actually end up in the same state of happiness or worse than when they receive the money. Think about that, okay?